What's up nerds? Welcome to Sanctioning. Sanctioning. If you're new here, I got a degree in chemical engineering and now I'm pursuing a PhD in chemical and environmental engineering. Specifically, I do research on water treatment and I do denitrification, which is basically a fancy way of saying I use high powerful lights to turn bad water into good water. And so this video, I'm going to be sharing my experiences in my high school, college and engineering and why I decided to pursue a PhD. And if you're interested in any of these, I'd love to go way more in depth in the future and answer any questions you guys might have. Right off the bat, if you're thinking about pursuing a degree in engineering or any STEM field for that matter, I would highly encourage you to do so. Engineering and STEM and science is super fascinating for me because it can turn the strange familiar and the familiar strange. I've always wondered whether engineering was right for me because it seems really difficult and really scary and it seems like you have to be like a master at math, but don't worry about any of that. If you're interested in it, I would highly, highly encourage you to go for it, especially if you're in a diverse group, whether you're a female or any type of race or anything that's diverse, I highly encourage you to just go for it. It's worse than I feared. What is it? I'm afraid your son has the knack. The knack? The knack. It's a rare condition characterized by an extreme intuition about all things mechanical and electrical and utter social ineptitude. Can he lead a normal life? No. He'll be an engineer. Growing up, I was never really too into engineering things like building or Legos or fixing things. I was never really good at that kind of stuff, but I've always been super passionate about just learning and just anything in school, math and science and reading and everything. I just always just love school. Like I never saw myself questioning like, hey, why do we have to learn this? When are we ever going to use it? I just kind of just enjoyed learning it. And so I would say my story starts off in my freshman year of high school when I took an integrated science class, which was basically a crash course of bio, chem, and physics all in one year. Um, but it wasn't really an AP class, it was just like an overview. Although it was really fascinating for me because like I said, I just enjoyed learning. It was extremely challenging for me and it turned me off from math and science for the next couple of years in high school. And so throughout high school, I just kind of saw myself as being a music major. So maybe some of you guys are from my old uh, YouTube videos. So that's really awesome to see that you guys are still uh, watching my old videos. But I knew deep down that I was still passionate about math and science, even though I felt like I wasn't really good at it. So throughout high school, I didn't really take too many um, like AP classes, I just took my, you know, general chemistry and general physics and English and all that stuff. But I've always just felt like, you know, this science stuff is so cool. So I love watching, you know, pop physics videos and pop um, anything related to science on YouTube and documentaries and things like that. Because that just kind of fueled me throughout my studies. And it wasn't until senior year of high school where I thought, you know what, AP calculus seems pretty interesting. My math teacher motivated us to pursue it, and he showed us this one movie called Stand and Deliver. You're gonna work harder than you ever worked before. And the only thing I ask from you is ganas. And that was honestly one of like the first key, key changes for me, because I realized the potential that math and science and engineering has for you to change your lifestyle, if you put the effort to do so. So thinking back whether I wanted to risk being stressed out just like I was in ninth grade science, I was thinking, oh, is it really worth it to pursue you know, AP calculus? And so I decided to go for it anyway, and honestly, it was like the best um, idea I could have done for myself. Because although AP calc was um, really challenging, it completely just blew my mind once I discovered what calculus was all about. Wow, it just unlocked this whole world for me and I just realized what the potential is for engineering and math, what it can do, and the applications. And that's when I really just fell in love with physics. When I first learned about derivatives, velocity, acceleration, integrals, my mind was all over the place. It was really tough, but um, I stayed up late at night to study and try to pass my, 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 uh, my classes. And it was also senior year, so that was right in the perfect time for me to apply to college. So I was like, okay, AP Calc was kind of cool, and science is hard, but it is pretty cool, so why not give this engineering thing a shot? So I applied to a bunch of colleges, mostly UCs, University of California, and CSUs. 
uh, California State Universities and I got rejected by some and I got accepted to some. And so ultimately I applied for environmental engineering and then got into my alma mater. So now I'm finishing up high school and I'm about to start my degree in environmental engineering. And so I was really excited to hit the ground running because I was super motivated. You know, first time leaving home, uh, first time really being out and about in the college life and dorms. And I was really excited to see what, you know, environmental engineering was all about. Not only was I passionate about math and science and stuff, but I was also interested in doing something for the environment and applying engineering skills for the environment. So that's why I decided to do environmental engineering. So in my first year of college, there are two main points that I'd like to discuss. Number one is the grades and then number two is the major. So my first year of college was really interesting because I was super motivated, you know, first time being away from home and the whole college lifestyle was just everything that I've always wanted, you know? Just wake up, go to class, do a bunch of nerd stuff all day, meet a bunch of other nerds, and then those nerds become your friends. Go home, do some homework with some other nerds, and then, uh, you know, just go have fun with those nerds. And those are your friends for four years. But I was really struggling academically. Again, I really enjoy the classes, and the most important classes I took my first year are what I call the trifecta of engineering. Chemistry, physics, and calculus. Name a more iconic trio. And so honestly, I kind of struggled a lot my first year because I didn't really have a strong foundation because I was so scared to take AP Chemistry and AP Physics. Um, I had a really poor foundation coming into college. So I actually quite struggled a lot. Whereas all my other friends who have already taken, you know, AP Chem, AP Physics, AP Calc, they were just reviewing the whole year. So their first year was just like a breeze. But for me, I had to spend way more time than the average student just to barely pass. And that's exactly what happened. I was spending hours and hours every single day, you know, going to class, taking notes, studying, doing homework, going to the library, ask, going to office hours, asking for help. And I was still not only not getting A's, but I was like really doing poorly. Every time midterms came around, I did really poorly on the midterms. And then I would have to study even harder for the finals just to barely pass. So my first year, I kind of just barely got away with like lots of C's, lots of B's, and like only A's in like, um, you know, non-core classes. So during that entire first year, although I did pass all my classes, I still had this thought in the back of my mind that like, you know what, maybe engineering isn't really right for me. The second point I like to bring up is about deciding my major. Because I started off in environmental engineering, our school actually has a combined program with chemical and environmental. So the first year, the curriculum is exactly the same for both majors. And then as you go on, they start to diverge in terms of the classes. So I remember on the first day of, you know, intro to chemical and environmental engineering, our professor showed us the average salary for chemical engineers and the average salary for environmental engineers. And right off the bat, half the class that started off as environmental, one week later, they all switched to chemical engineering because everyone was so motivated by how much more money chemis made than envies. And so I'd like to say that I'm not motivated by money, but I have to admit that that was the first little seed that motivated me to switch to chemical engineering. Over the year, apart from studying and struggling a bit with my classes, I decided to do some research whether I should switch to chemical. And so I thought about what motivated me. And so like I said, I, I love math and science, even though I felt like I wasn't really so good at it. And I like this whole environmental aspect, but I'm not really sure if that's exactly what I want to get into. And what can you do with chemical? So with chemical engineering, you can still do environmental stuff. You can still work in water or air, but there's actually more doors open with chemical engineering. With chemical engineering, you could perhaps do the same thing as environmental, such as working in the water or air industries, or you can work in chemical production. That sounds kind of cool. And then there's also more things that I was started looking into like biotechnology and material science, like nanotechnology. That sounds kind of cool. So <clears throat> I tried to do as much research as I could and talk to my professors and different students that um, that either switch themselves or pursued one degree versus the other. And so ultimately, I decided to switch into chemical engineering after my first year. So now I finished high school and my first year of college, and now I'm entering the real core of engineering. So before you take your core classes, you have to take your fundamental uh, fundamental classes. And so the first one is chemical process analysis or mass balance, which I have a bunch of videos on that, by the way. And so for me, this was even more challenging than coming into freshman year. 
and it was so frustrating because again I was like waking up early studying doing tons of problems doing more than just the homework doing extra problems in the back of the book doing examples watching videos and I was still doing poorly so that's when I again really had to think about wow I just switched into chemical is this really not for me I mean I don't know what other major to choose but for one reason or another uh, I decided to stick with it did okay I've improved some grades a bit but I was still kind of struggling and just kind of like sluggishly along and I felt like on one hand I really was fascinated by engineering but on the other hand it's just like ugh, this is too difficult for me to really understand so now I'm taking my core chemical engineering courses which are kinetics thermodynamics and transport phenomena name a more iconic trio and transport phenomena is actually three classes which is fluid mechanics mass transfer and heat transfer name a more iconic trio so lots of trifectas because those three classes are the trifecta of transport and transport kinetics and thermo are the trifecta of chemical engineering and what's interesting is they all incorporate the trifecta of the fundamental classes which is chemistry calculus and physics so it's for me that was just so fascinating to see that everything's like coming together you know seeing all the applications combining principles from chemistry you know thinking about stoichiometry and reactions and then using physics and the way that motions of fluids flow and pressures and different things like that all combining in one giant system to solving a tough problem and so for me that's super interesting because now I can't look at a glass of water the same way because even just like a simple bottle of water there's so much physics and chemistry and calculus that's going on just like all these ions and fluids mixing and think about all the forces swirling this around that's just what chemical engineering is all about so whether it's like on the small scale like studying atoms or like on a on a medium scale like on a lab bench scale you know studying like a little bottle of water or on a large scale on a large industrial chemical plant Chemical engineering applies those principles from each of those classes you're taking and then tries to integrate all the different bits and pieces and putting them together to either develop a model, make a prediction for a reaction, so many different things. So here's an example of one of the kinetics textbooks. And so it's basically trying to figure out how fast a reaction will take place. And so there's lots of math and models that you can use to try to calculate this. This was super fascinating for me because you're using the principles of chemistry, physics, and calculus simultaneously to solve an application problem. And ironically, even though the classes got harder, like I said, you're doing so much at the same time, that's when my grades started to really improve and that's when I realized that my fundamentals were actually really solidifying. I mean, I can go on and on and on talking about each of the classes and I'm sure I'll do plenty of videos talking about all my favorite classes in chemical engineering, but it was so rewarding to finally see my grades improving for seeing like something that I knew I was passionate deep down. So that's a lot about the classes. And then the other thing I had to think about was what kind of career, what kind of industry would I be getting into? And I was really considering pursuing grad school, even though I was still kind of scared that I wouldn't get in because my grades weren't so good. I felt like grad school and research was something super interesting to me. So I applied to work slash volunteer as an undergrad research assistant. And I got into a lab studying material science. And that was really awesome because I got to help other uh, researchers do experiments, analyze data, and get truly involved with the research. So if you're not familiar with research, it's really fascinating because you're delving into a topic that people are curious about but no one has really discovered yet. So you're actually doing experiments that no one has done before and trying to just further develop the research. So not only was I working hard for my classes, but I also had to, you know, go to the lab on the side and try to do experiments and analyze data and give presentations. So that's when I decided that I think I should pursue grad school. But I wasn't so confident I was going to get in because I was afraid that my grades for my freshman and sophomore year were going to hinder me. Regardless, I decided to apply and I waited and waited and waited and all my friends were getting jobs and I was waiting and waiting and waiting and then finally in my senior year of college I got into grad school, yay, at the same school, um, same department, so I'm still kind of here. <laughs> but I was just so happy to see my whole progression over the years, like really struggling with like high school science and really struggling with my fundamental freshman year courses and then still kind of struggling with engineering. But then finally, finally, after several years, like really get everything to click and realizing what everything's all about. So as cheesy as it is, if I can do it, literally anyone can do it. <laughs> 
So that concludes my whole high school into college and then getting my degree in uh, chemical engineering. And I graduated with my friends and you know, it was just a blast enjoying senior year. Some of them went to grad school too. Some of them got other jobs, um, even across different countries. So it's so cool um, networking with different students and meeting different types of people. And so now I'm ready to start my next journey, which was uh, my PhD. So I have some vlogs on that if you're interested in that as well. So in my first year of grad school, I took classes that were more advanced versions of what I took in undergrad and also do research as well. So the classes I took were again, thermodynamics, transport phenomena, and kinetics. But this time you go much more in detail into what the fundamental principles are. So everything you did in undergrad, you're doing it again, but you're going more in depth into how the equations are derived, what are the applications of these equations, what are the research fields that you can get into with each of these topics. So although it was challenging, it was that much more rewarding to go into all of these things that I've seen before, but really going deep into the fundamentals. So I got introduced to a lot of uh, advanced mathematics and reviewing some physics and chemistry to see where these equations are derived. And at the end of the first year, you have to take your preliminary exam. So what the prelim is, you're basically learning everything you did in your first year of grad school. And again, everything you did in your first year of grad school is everything you learned in undergrad, but more in depth. So this exam was at the end of the first year and it's a six hour long exam and you have to take three, uh, three two hour exams. So I did kinetics, transport and water. So I had to study, you know, really hard for that. And then I passed my exams. Now I'm starting my second year of grad school. And so now that I'm done with all my classes, now I can focus solely on research. So now everything that I did in undergrad, now I'm getting paid to do so. So basically I just wake up and go to the lab, do a bunch of experiments, analyze the data, and then go home and then do it all over again. And after doing that, I've had enough research and data to do my qualifying exam, which is in your second year. So the qualifying exam is basically saying, what have you done for the past year or two in terms of the research? And what do you propose to do in the next couple of years to actually get your PhD? And so that can be tough because you have to apply all the fundamentals into not only developing the research, but importantly, going into the literature of what has and hasn't been done before. You know, looking at this group that they analyzed this piece of uh, data and this other group that they did this and this, but oh look, you know, they're missing X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z and see uh, and try to analyze what's going on with this data. So I'm really excited to talk about my research because it's so funny how it just comes full circle. You know, I started off as an environmental engineering major and then I switched to chemical engineering and graduated and now I'm doing water, uh, water treatment for my PhD. So it's so funny, so ironic how everything just kind of connected together. So I'll talk a little bit about my research. So I basically treat nitrate, which is not only a threat to the ecosystem, but also has negative health effects for humans. And our investigation is using photochemical denitrification, which basically uses high powerful ultraviolet UV lights to degrade the nitrate into less harmful byproducts. And so I investigate the photochemistry and try to understand exactly what's going on in the system and try to optimize these methods for large scale application. So after doing research for a couple of years or so, you have to take your qualifying exam around the end of your second year. And basically what that entails is you have to talk about the research you've been doing, what your data means, and you have to propose where your research is projected. And importantly, you have to undergo intensive literature review to understand what kind of research has already been done and what's missing for you to try to further investigate. So just like whether it was in high school or studying in college, for this, I had to you know, work really hard. This time I'm getting data in the lab and reading a lot of sources, checking all my data, checking all my calculations. And I presented my research to a committee of professors to show what kind of research I've been doing and where I see it going in the future. And so now I passed that as well. And for the next few years, I'll be doing research to continue what I started. And then hopefully at the end of it, get my PhD after I do my defense. So that was kind of a lot because for me that was like 10 years of my life <laughs> from high school to college and now in grad school and the present. And so again, if you're thinking about going into engineering or thinking about pursuing a PhD, I'd honestly really encourage it. You know, part of the motivation for this video was thinking back, reflecting and wondering whether engineering is hard. And at the end of the day, yes, it is hard, 
but it, I'm simply applying everything that I learned from the ground up, whether it's the fundamental just chemistry in high school and then going more advanced into the engineering in college and still using those principles to this day. With that, I'll leave you with a few tips that in my opinion are really critical and I'll probably be repeating these over and over again. Number one, it's not what you know, it's who you know. If you're studying really hard and get really good grades, that's absolutely fantastic. That's going to get open so many doors for you. But what's really important is your networking skills as well. Not only is your network going to help you get a job, but your network can be crucial for identifying your core, long-lasting friends. I mean, my friends that I met in the dorms freshman year, I'm still friends with them to this day. <clears throat> my second tip, as cheesy as it is, is work hard, play hard. I encourage you to find your passion and use it to propel you for your studies. Whether you're interested in like building things, you want to do like mechanical engineering, or you're interested in chemistry, you want to be like a scientist, or you like helping people, maybe you even want to be a doctor, or even do business. Um, engineering is really the jack of all trades because you have to deal with people, you have to deal with things, you have to deal with math and equations. So there's really a lot to go into it. And so that's where the work hard really takes into play, but there's also the play hard aspect too. So having friends, like I said, is really key. So find your passion and pour your soul into it, and that can drive you to pursue your studies. That's why having good friends are so critical because, you know, you're going to class together, you're doing projects together, and then you can like de-stress together. And air quotes on the de-stress because, you know, whether that's like a little bit more introverted, if you want to just chill, watch Netflix, play video games, or you want to do something a little more extroverted, whether you like hiking or like going to concerts or hanging out with your friends. Finding your hobbies are really one of the key things that I feel like people don't talk about enough. You can have, you gotta work hard, but you also have to play hard too. Okay, that being said, I think I gave y'all a lot of content. Again, I'd be more than happy to delve into any of these topics more deeply, and I'm sure I'll be doing way more videos in the future. So whether you're in high school thinking about engineering, or you're in college looking for engineering tips, I'll definitely be posting more videos, answering all your guys' questions, and then continuing with more fundamentals of like mass balance and thermo in the future. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and dog.